Hi, Brian. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm fine. I know you're not at home. I'm not. I'm not. I'm at the Princess Margaret Show House. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, too. Congratulations on another fabulous show house. Thank you. Thank you. It was a fun house, actually. It's a beautiful house. It's, it uh, was a fun house. But they're all fun houses to do, but this one actually is, I think, one of the best ones we've done. What number? Can you believe it? It's my eighth. No. Eight years. I gave up after eight. six. You are a superhero. I try. <laughs> but you know what? I just found out that from since the beginning till now, the lottery has raised $404 million for cancer research. Yes. yes, yes. Almost just half stop. a billion dollars. So, so to you that yes. did the show houses and to all the people that bought tickets, we've raised $400 million, not including this year. So it's not only a beautiful project, it's a very important project. It's very important. Congratulations to you. Thank you to HBC for hosting this webinar. This is like, this is my first one. Well, here we are. Here we are. And we're talking. Here we are. And you're sitting in front of we're a trans. Talking. I am sitting in front of one of the trends, which is, um, you know, we, we don't see a lot of pattern in interiors, especially contemporary interiors. It's usually more traditional interiors. We see a lot of beautiful fabrics with patterns, but we're seeing in, in more contemporary spaces patterns. And one of the things I love is wall covering. And you can see here in the dining room at the show house, we have this incredible wall covering um, that has this very subtle pattern. And you can see how um, we still can hang art on it. You know, I'm gonna walk around a little bit with you, but the art looks great on the wall. The art's and fantastic. And the color of the credenza, which looks like a kind of mahogany color from where I'm sitting, is beautiful against those deep gray walls. So that is a, a, an original deco piece. And that's really? also something, you know, I think we need to see more of, incorporating vintage yes. pieces into that your spaces. And if you put one great piece of vintage, it elevates everything else. Completely. And then you put the modern art, the great patterned wallpaper, and it just makes such a great mix for the space. And this is the space we did a, a mirrored table deco inspired this whole house is very deco inspired and i'll take you oh, and look at this period because it's got it's got an element of glamour it does it's got, it has an element of formality which i associate with your work you're not a super cash guy i'm a casual guy in the way i live but i'm not a sloppy guy like i like an elegant home I like yeah. elegant clothes and furniture, um, but I like it in a comfortable way. Like here's the library and you know, it's an elegant organized space, but it's still a comfortable space. I think, I think that's the key, you know, to what I like to do is, um, let me turn this around so you can see me again, is, you know, elegance, but approachable and comfortable. It does, elegance doesn't have to mean it's stuffy and formal. It means it's just, refined and timeless. I like, call, I like to call your style and the style I love grand casual. Yes. Yes. Grand casual. Grand now I casual. want to ask you a question about the room like that. I know. It's you've got black on black on black on black, charcoal, you know, but it's not boring and I can yeah. see definition. And what are the secrets to layering one color in different tonalities? and still having the definition and making it pop. Well, the thing about this, and, and if you, you know, if people pick up House and Home this month, you'll see that the real color, it's very blue. So that, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so you can see it in the magazine that the color is really this beautiful blue. We did a wallpaper here, but the mix here is, you know, what we think of as being traditional, that button tufted sofa, um, but it's done in a more contemporary way and it's in velvet. And that's part of the beauty of these spaces is if you're gonna do a monochromatic space, it's all about texture. So the, the um, sofa is the velvet, then you have the textured carpet, the wallpaper, and then the, the drapery is in a man's suiting fabric. And then layering on top of it, things like, especially for fall, the faux fur throws, you know, the woven velvet and the cut velvet pillows. 
and then mixing things. So we did, instead of a traditional library, we did these um, attagers, these shelf units that are in an aged brass, and you can see them. I hope I'm not jumping around too much. So it gives, uh, you know, a, a, a nice... How do you find a book? You don't, you don't. <laughs> Uh, your priorities you don't, are you don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> at least not in this house the stylist one <laughs> yes you know in my house they're all the right side around but I find in show houses or models they turn them around because it's more about sort of the overall impression and not getting hung up on the books but in my house, house pardon who needs to find a book in a show house nobody exactly in my yeah. house, you have to find them, but no. So, uh, and then we did, you know, the mix of mid-century is still popular and mixing the different metals. So the, the shelf unit is in the brass, the antique brass. And then this is in um, an aged pewter. And then I bought a vintage 70s mirrored coffee table. So it's again, and I'm going to turn this around so we can talk. It's again about the mix. It's all about the mix. It always is, isn't it? It is. I think that's what's so interesting about spaces and that's what makes these spaces. You know, people are like, you know, why are those spaces so fabulous and why are they so comfortable and why do they work? And they work because it doesn't look so much like a formula, even though, you know, it's monochromatic and people talk about monochromatic, they think it's all beige. Well, monochromatic just means it's the same color that goes through, but the velvet sofa with the carpet and the man tailored drapes, that's where the interest comes from. And of course, yeah. art. art. And the light hits everything differently, which gives it a different cast. So when you're doing a room like this, you're putting it all together and then your helpers come in and they style and da da da. And then you come in at the end and you make a few changes and it clicks into place. There's yes. a click. Yes. And you know that moment where the balance is perfect. It does come alive and and it's not just about the big things, like you said, Linda, it's about the little things too. So you have the big sweeping things like the sofa and the carpet and the tables, but the, the throw and the pillows and the accessories are just as important because when we set up the houses, they don't have the same, you know, the house is beautiful, but it doesn't have the same soulfulness until you get those accessories in. And that's what adds the personality. Yeah, yeah, but to do it in a show house is especially, tricky because it's not your place. You're, you know, you're kind of imagining someone. It's kind of, you're setting the stage for a lifestyle. So let's exactly. move and show us some of your favorite moments. And, and Brian, are you aware of the trends as you're going through or are you just reacting to what feels good in your mind and it ends up being a trend? I think it's a little of both. You know, I think we have some fun with trends, um, but it's really just what feels good for the house. So and now then this is the opposite. This is the light version of the dark room. Yes, look at this. Oh, okay, this window. This is every show house, you always give us a moment. It's the aha moment, and this is it. That is the space. So we have bedrooms that look down into that space. And the size of the mullions you used are fantastic. Yeah, because the window is so big, I didn't want it to look sort of skimpy. And this is a good trick for people. If you want this moment, and you don't have a lot of money to spend in a custom window. This is just windows stacked. So yes. they're standard sizes and we've just assembled them together. And that's a great, great way to do it. And then they're locked together. Brilliant. And then one of the big trends we're seeing also is this sort of relaxed sofa. This is one of the sofas we do for Hudson's Bay and it is um, downfilled. Downfield. And you know, it has that nice relaxed slip covered look. And it takes a space like this that could appear with the wrong furniture, very cold. Yes. But it, it warms it and softens the edge of the space. And then mixing the metals, you know, we have the, the antique brass and the black, and then you've got the black there, like that dark pewter and the brass lamps and the black windows. And you know, when, that, when this room was empty and it was during construction, it was quite an imposing space. But when you see it with the furniture and it softens the whole space, um, it, it attracts you into the space. But I, like, I love those moments. I love moments where people look at it and go, oh, look at that room. So 
I love the thin, thin arm on the chair. That's a trend. Yes. Yes. Arm. Yes, is we have that here. And another trend is the cane. Yeah. Yes. Graceful. And it's and it, it's tactile. Yes. And what we see is cane, you know, you associate cane maybe with with summer, but no, it looks great all year round. And again, it takes a space and softens it and makes it a little more casual. And, yes. uh, and again, mixing metals, you've got the shiny brass and then you've got the aged brass and the limestone. And like we said, the black. And then here I have the oversized sofa, which is really just two pieces of a sectional that we put together. You know, we-, that we fine? Pardon? Is that one of your pieces? It is, it is. It's uh, part of our, our pier sectional. So we took the sofa without the chaise and did a right arm and a left arm. And then those, those signature pieces, you know, finding fun little pieces, that's a piece we did, um, which well, is a, a table that's mounted on the wall. So, you know, it's either, you know, buy those big things or buy those little things that really make the space quite interesting. That's um, fun. Little things should come later. That's how you fill it out in the end. Yeah, you get that first, and then you go to that That's little so thing. I'm noticing that a lot. Now, tell me about your floors because they're gorgeous. Well, yes, yeah, I love, I love a floor to go through the whole space, and that unifies the space. So let me just show you this. So this is like a hand scraped oak floor, and that really is a, a real trend right now. We didn't see it a lot. I mean, in the old days, we saw those pickled oak floors that look pink. And now they're these scraped floors. And it works well with this. We did this Constantino stone here and we used it in the pattern in there. But the, this oak floor goes all the way through and it flows into the kitchen. A very forgiving floor. You know, the light floors are very forgiving. Um, and then we have the wow Ooh, moment. Let's pause and take in the kitchen. So uh. this is our kitchen. And we have, again, punctuated with black, the black stools. We did the black chairs. We did a smoked glass table and a custom banquette, but I love the chairs. I love the black. And then we took the black and put it on the refrigerator. So we have the refrigerator and the, the black pantry. The trends, Brian. Outline. Yes. Using outline, and you're showing it here beautifully. It is. It, it, it ties into the adjoin, adjoining um, family room with that big window. But then it's also about appliances now aren't, you know, you can get appliances that match the color of the kitchen. And they're either, you know, that neutral thing like this. I love this champagne color toaster from Smeg. I think it's so beautiful. But now I don't mind leaving some of these out. I always say to people, oh, you've got to hide the toaster. You've got to hide. But when you have things like this and it's styled so beautifully, why do you have to put it out? And then of course, you know, the beautiful pots, you know, that come in colors, look at that. Yeah. And you could do great colors, whether it's this deep, deep blacky blue or red or green or- you know, Barry could put great food in those pots. He could, I have these pots in red. Notice so. I said Gary. Yeah, I know because I, yes, I don't. The, the most exertion I put in the kitchen is opening the fridge. But, yeah. and then, okay, you know, the great cutting, the faucet. the faucet, yes, look at that in brass. Beautiful aged brass. Beautiful. Yes, and then, and mix it with a white sink so that the faucet becomes the wow factor of the whole space. I, love oh. I know, this is a, this is a, this is a great one. And, and then having your cutting board out all the time, like just leave out your cutting board and whether you put herbs on it or fruit and then pull it out as you need it. So this is also an idea if you don't have a lot of place for storage, you know, we're looking at spaces that are, are relatively small. Let me just put this here. And um, people don't have as much storage. So if you don't have a lot of storage and you have to leave things out, get beautiful things, you know, the right colors, the, the wood cutting board, the toaster, the pots. So I and they was asked, um, interviewing Trish Matt, um, Mag Magwood recently. She had a great um, way of saying, she said, you've got the pretties and the uglies. She said, the pretties you put on the shelf, like your floating shelf behind you, where you've got gorgeous stuff, all styled, don't touch it, <laughs> you know? And then you've got the uglies, which go in the cupboards. Correct. And that's how you as your kitchen because you can't expect everything to look good no 
No, but, but the teacher. Fantastic. You know, you have to style your kitchen the way you style your family room or your living room or your dining room. It should be beautiful all the time. So again, if you're selecting items that look beautiful out, keep them out. And like you said, the things that are not so pretty, just mm -hmm. stick them away. But, um, you know, especially now, you know, the trend is so much of the open kitchen and the kitchen that's open to the family room and in many of the condos open to the whole space. So you've got to strategically look at what you're buying for your kitchen. Yeah. And, and the dishes too that are on the open shelves. I love open shelves. And, you know, we want beautiful dishes. And they could be simple. I'm gonna show you this beautiful cabinet that we did to showcase these dishes. I'm gonna walk you around so you see it from here. So I did this pantry cabinet. Oh, I love this. This looks very Asian. Isn't it? Well, I did this screen instead of a wall between the back hall mudroom and the kitchen. And I covered it in wallpaper. And then we were gonna have just a utility cupboard at the end and I thought, no, I wanna make it into a beautiful moment. So your dishes can be out. There's nothing wrong with keeping your beautiful dishes out and your glass I need, I need to know how you did it. Open the doors, please. So what did you do? You lined it in what? It's a lacquer, a matte lacquer in here. Oh, oh, and we did the LED strip light here and glass shelves. Mm -hmm. And very simple, very simple piece. And these, um, you know, metal doors are, are prefabricated metal systems. Okay, and gorgeous. it's not a pretty moment. So you come in from the side door and that's what you see. Gorgeous. So if anybody, up, I would slap them. <laughs> <laughs> but the nice thing is, <laughs> the nice thing is that everyday items can be beautiful. It's yeah. just put a little effort into the organizing of them. The dishes, if they're the same, you know, you're, those are white and blue. So we did just all the white and blue and the clear glasses. They can be out. You know, the same with the shelves, all the dishes are out. So be thoughtful about, you know, when you're buying your dishes and your glasses and things like that, that maybe they're not hidden away. They can be accessible. And you know, frankly, if you go to the Bay and you see that you can buy fabulous solid color dish dishes that are not expensive, at all. At all. Shockingly inexpensive. And they look fabulous in a cabinet. Yeah, I'll show you. Let me just show you this one that I love. Is it here yet? Look at this. And these are all from Hudson's Bay, but look at this texture. Okay, that's beautiful. That and reminds me of Blue Mountain. Remember? They started Pardon? with pick Okay, that's gorgeous. But look at how beautiful that texture is. And then with these, and whether that's your pasta bowl and this is a little dessert thing, or you put this with your dip and you put things around it, you know, vegetables around it, but these are the things you can leave out all the time. There's, there's no problem putting this on the shelf. And you know, there's no problem with getting rid of your old dishes that you're sick of that don't owe you anything. Really, uh, upcycling really? to a point, but you know, and just treat yourself to some fabulous new stuff, which just elevates your space. Completely. I mean, this is all affordable. The price tags are all off of it. But it's all affordable product. That's, I mean, that is the beauty of Hudson's Bay, is that at Hudson's Bay, there's such incredible design at such great pricing. Um, so when we talk about trends or we talk about things that have long lives, it's accessible and that, it used to be in the old days, you couldn't find things like that at a reasonable price. Now it's all available at a reasonable and price. Light fixtures. I love your deco inspired light fixtures. Yes, aren't those beautiful? Great. Great, it's a, it's a really great space. You know, I love spending time in this house. It's such a, a wonderful house to spend time in. It's, Have you had a favorite of all your eight houses? I think this is my favorite house of all the houses and, and you know, the shame of this house is, you know, this year we can't have anybody come and visit. So this is our opportunity through things like this and the magazine. It's really to show the design because you work so hard and you're like, no one's going to come in my house. How? Like last year we had 70,000 people I in know. this house. I used to so love this, the show houses. I used to love the open houses. I used to love the cooking classes and the decorating seminars. And, but that we'll have it back again next year. Exactly, and you know, that's why Hudson's Bay was so great with this because they realized my disappointment in not being able to open the house. So, 
everybody at Hudson's Bay said, well, why don't we do this with Linda at the house so people can see the house and you can walk right. through and, and be exposed. I love this. Show me more. Show you more. Let me think. What can I show you? You can walk me around a little more. Let me, because you're looking at my chin right now. I don't want to look at that. Um, and then nesting tables. You know, we did these nesting tables. We did one over there and one over here. So we broke up the nesting tables. So you don't have to always keep them nested together. And they're so delicate. And I love the brass. It's about mixing things also. I did a, a custom upholstered screen behind that sectional. Yeah. So that's a great way to create sort of a cozy little area. Very easy to do. You didn't upholster the whole wall? No, we did um, plywood panels covered in foam, wrapped in fabric. And then we just did that corner and they're applied with Velcro. So That's people great, can do that at home. You can great, go to Home Depot. Yeah, it's so easy. You can go to Home Depot, get the wood cut for you and get the Velcro foam and fabric with a staple gun. And one of our vendors from Hudson's Bay got us the fabric from one of the sofas we did. Um, it was that fabric, but in a different color. So they gave That's, us the fabric. Can I just say to you that the length of the sofa uh, under the window is key to the success of that room. You have to have some exaggeration. Exactly. Some big statements. You've got that sofa, you've got the grand double height window. These are the things that make the house really dramatic and memorable. Yes, I think so. And you know, because I have a sofa here and I was gonna have a sofa here, I can't just have two sofas side by side. So this has the identity of the slip covered and the relaxed and the two story window. And like you said, I couldn't just do the pure sofa by itself. I needed to do the exaggerated sofa. And that gave us the opportunity to really, you know, they don't look like, why are these two sofas sitting beside each other? They're moments on their own. And then again, I mix them with vintage chairs. So we have the modern cane chair and the chairs in the 1930s. So that's a great way, again, how you can integrate all this contemporary furniture and a few moments of soulfulness with your accessories and your vintage pieces. And the vintage pieces work great with these new pieces. This is a table we do for Hudson's Bay in the brass and marble. And it looks yes. so great with that vintage piece. You do. Love it. Okay, let's go see something little like a powder room, please. Oh or my God. Oh, I can't, you know what? I can't take you into the powder room okay. because the people that are helping control this, I locked them in there. They're hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I locked, I locked the girls in the powder room. I said, you can't come out. <laughs> you have a window at the outside? I mean, come on. Oh, yes. I'll show you outside. Hold on. You haven't locked anybody out there? <laughs> no, they're all in a bedroom. Or, you know, we have these seating areas outside. And we have the dining table outside there. And, um, you know, have fun with flooring, too. You know, I always talk about having fun with floors. This is a wow. I mean, this is a, a pattern that's, over 2,000 years old. Um, we would see it in Greece um, over 2,000 years ago. And again, when people are designing and decorating, you know what, you know, it's interesting. I was talking about this earlier that these floors, you know, are thousands of years old, the design. We just made it with that Constantino stone. But um, you can paint this on your floor too. So if you have a wood floor and you're talented, you know, you're artistic, you, that's what they did in the federal period in the United States in the 1800s. They would do faux limestone exteriors. They would paint the wood floors. I mean, they didn't have access to marble slabs because they, that they did in Europe and England and France and things like that. So they painted it all. Um, but that, you know, those are those moments that we want to have all the time. Yeah. And then, now when we're at home and people are looking for things to do to make their homes better, some of these ideas are so inspiring. I hope so. Like, I really yeah. want people to take that away. I want people to see, you know, our, you know, do these videos and look at the magazine and say, you know, yeah. I can do that. You know, and the, all, the thing. All here, all the sources for everything that Brian put into that show house, including his paint colors, are all here. And this is the October issue and you have to rush and get it because it's almost off sale. We're almost sold I know. out. I know. I've sent the, I sent it to everybody, all my friends in America. Well, I've that, sent it to them. We're almost sold out. You have a little group. <laughs> but you know, you look at this and think, here are these wowie spaces, and everything is, you know, sensibly priced. There's nothing like that's crazy here. So 
and, and even with vintage finds to mix with it, vintage finds can be very affordable. I mean, it's not find expensive. Your, help us, Pardon? tell us about your shopping tips for vintage finds. Um, well, you have to go to sort of markets and, and some vintage stores and even auctions. And I think people would be shocked at how inexpensive some of the pieces are. You know, the vintage glass coffee table that we did with the velvet sofa and the mid-century chairs. We just wanted a few vintage pieces. They were the least expensive pieces in the house. Now, the deco buffet wasn't. That was a, a bit of an expensive piece. Um, oh. But even if you inherit some pieces, you know, a lot of people look at it and say, oh, it's old. But it really has a new life in a modern space. You know, in a space like this, you put an English sideboard or a French chest or a Canadian pine piece. Like it would be so gorgeous in this room to have a Quebec pine, you know, little table with some modern chairs on it. So there are so many, you have to rethink how you do the mix. It's all about the mix. The, the modern art, the traditional art, the velvet button tufted sofas, the mid-century chairs, it's all about the mix. And don't be afraid to try things. Don't, don't think, oh my God, this is silly. Try it, take a photo of it because we're used to seeing things in, uh, in a perspective of, you know, a magazine or a book. And exactly. so that's how we're used to studying other people's work. Take a photo of it so you can see it in two dimension, look at it, move things around, have a, a friend who's a decorating buddy. I know people that work in pairs where they have one friend who comes over, they move all the furniture together, the one friend takes the picture, they do it together and that's they help each other. It's really fun. Get somebody in your bubble. Yeah. And don't overthink it. You know, people overthink it. Just go with your gut. If you love it, that's all that matters. And I always say to people, you want to do, you want, like this sofa comes in some crazy colors, you know, some beautiful, like burnt orange and apple greens and things like go that. For it. If that's your color, go for it. Have yes. fun. The, and if you yes. want to do, if you don't want to commit to the whole sofa, do one of the occasional chairs in a great color, do a burnt orange velvet in a neutral space. Um, you can have a lot of fun with decorating and, and that's the whole point of it. And we're in our house so much now, much more than ever before. We need to sort of look around our house and say, we love where we live. We love spending time in it. And uh, you know, like I said, just have fun and, and be creative. And, and the key is to really go online, go on the video tours, see yeah. spaces, open up the magazine, photograph the pages, keep it in a file on, you know, a Pinterest file or however you want to do it. And then you're sort of armed when you go shopping. And another tip I have, Brian, is that if you love a color, there's going to be a year when that color is going to have its moment. Like yes. I love ochre. And ochre was one of our colors last year that we did products in and it's back this year, but it's not going to be around forever. Buy, the, buy everything in that color if you love it. Buy the dishes, the throw pillows, the pillows, because it's not going to be here next year. No, and, and if you, you know, it's you not going out of style. Yeah. Because, you know, I get a lot of chocolate brown in my house, um, at, at the house, and it was, you know, I did that 20 years ago, and chocolate is hot again. Like, it's very into yep. the 70s. Yep. And I love it. I never stopped loving it because it's a color I loved. I loved the way it grounded my space. So I did that dark chocolate. And the same with people that, you know, maybe they don't want to do big expressions of color. You know, order the, like we have the sofa in the living room. Order the sofa in a soft gray or cream and then have that punch with the paint and the wallpaper or a carpet or the pillows. But sort of embrace who you are and don't care about yeah. what people so I think that this year you're going to see a lot of burnt orange, a lot yes. of accessories of burnt orange. And if we talk trends for a minute, burnt orange is a big color, yes. right? Aubergine is a big color. Black, yeah. off black. Chocolate brown, like you said, is the new black. Chocolate. Greens. Greens are popular also. Greens are big. Mixed metals. It's not a question of, are we sick of our brass faucet? Are we sick of our of our, you know, aged bronze handles. No, we just, we're sick of not mixing it. We have to mix it. Then we don't get sick of it. Well, that's the thing. I think it looks too contrived to match. You know, you don't want everything to match because it looks contrived. I think there's something interesting about having, you know, the brass faucet and the stainless steel oven. And even on that stainless steel oven from Jenner, it had the 
the brass and the stainless steel. But in the tables and accessories, you know, we have the attachés and the mixed brass. And then we have the table that's silver. Uh, you know, mix it up, have fun with it. Everything doesn't have to match. Um, there has to be an element that connects it. So in a room like this, it's the blue that connects it all together. But then mixing the metals on the end table and the attaché and in the family room, we'll go back, I'm gonna just show you. In the family room, um, again, we have the black metal here with the brass. We have the brass here. We have the dark pewter there. So it really is embracing it all. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous. You know, I think that people are gonna ask us questions. Did you know that? No, are people asking us questions? Well, apparently. Let me put this here. See, that's I right. Time, but we could take a couple. I so saw a few. By. I saw a few people say gorgeous. I've got little pop-up bubbles on my screen. Let me Somebody said that gorgeous, were gorgeous. Somebody said you did a good job. Thank you. Let me back up. Yep. You see yep. Yeah, you look good in that room, Brian. You could live there. I love the space. I feel like I've been here. I've worked here so long in this house. And also, I like the way you did the um, the dark edging on the opening between the two rooms. Yes. Nice. This is Thank one of your best show houses because it has a lot of refined detailing. A lot of refined details. And we have, um, you know, we've got a lot of great participants from vendors that have donated things that have made it more for made it easy to do this. Okay. Rhonda Cates wants to know if you could be in her bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda, what do you want him to do in your bubble? <laughs> as 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 Rhonda, if she's a good baker, I'm coming over. Okay. <laughs> and Sandra de Cosmo has raised her hand. I don't know what she wants. What's, what do you want, Sandra? <laughs> Tell us. So beautiful. So beautiful. Excellent ideas, Brian. Thank you. From Gladys. I love this. Okay. Speaking more about the print and pattern trends. Yeah. Well, pattern is a big thing. You know, we're looking at that more and more. And, and where we're seeing a lot of the patterns is in carpets. Um, because carpets have become really art pieces. So the plaid carpet, we have one upstairs in a bedroom, um, a plaid carpet. We're seeing patterns in pillows, whether it's on the sofas or on the beds. Um, we're seeing it in the wallpapers uh, that I showed you in the dining room. So pattern is fantastic. And, and especially pattern bedding. You know, you might be a white bedding person, but maybe you want to change it up every so often. Pattern bedding in bold statements or subtle statements is a really great way to change your bedroom. You can completely transform your bedroom by changing your bedding. Try flannel in the winter, a big floral in the summer, maybe linen, you know, or floral in the spring. You don't have to change everything, maybe just a duvet cover. Um, but have fun with pattern. We're seeing lots of pattern. The carpets, carpets are becoming a big, big deal with pattern. And bathroom tiles. And somebody just asked us for bathroom tile trends. And we know that um, float, uh, freestanding tubs are still big and wood for vanities is big and natural stone materials and man-made porcelain countertops. We know all that stuff, but one of the big trends are pattern tiles. And I have to say, I love pattern tiles when done well, but I'm a little worried about too much. I am too. I'm Myers seeing on the, um, those home, you know, the home makeover shows and I'm seeing like an bathroom so the whole floor is done or the whole kitchen is done and I think Ugh. I remember when we were ripping that off the walls Ugh. I would limit that I, I things you can change like the wallpaper and the carpet and things like that yeah. I would be yeah. a little more reluctant to go too crazy but you know what I want to do for a bathroom floor I want to do remember when you and I were at the interior design show in Toronto and we saw those vinyl floors that look like wood that was I pure parquet Yes, and they are waterproof. Yeah. And I want to do a wood bathroom floor in the vinyl with the freestanding tub and a beautiful vanity. And yeah. I think it would be a great, great yeah. idea because I love bathrooms. I see these European bathrooms with wood floors and I'm like, I don't know how they do that. 
So I'm going to try. You're going to come to the lake house and you're going to stay and you're going to have a bathroom, wood bathroom floor and a bathtub on it. Why don't we go up? We're supposed to go up. You're supposed to take let's me up. Go, let's go like soon. Well, the bathroom, I mean, I'm still a construction site, but let's go soon. Yes, but that's one of the trends I would see, wood, wood, that's beautiful cool. woods. And beautiful woods for furniture. Like we have some of the bedroom furniture is, is the popular, that heavy wire brush oak. So we have yeah. a bunch of dressers and night tables throughout the house, and you can see it in the magazine. Um, of wire brush oak, some of it is washed gray, some of it is ceruse. And for people that don't know what ceruseing is, is you take the wood, you wire brush it so it opens the grain, it sort of takes the softness out and keeps the hard part of the wood, and then you wash it with white. And you get that, and our master bedroom furniture is all ceruse white oak, and so if I take it there, but I'm worried we might freeze. Okay, Brian. Brian, if I wear my mask, can I come and have a personal tour? We'll talk. It'll be you and I. I'll wait outside. You'll walk around and I'll go outside. And well, if I wear my mask and we distance, we're in the same bubble. Can That's I? six feet away from me because I never take off my mask unless I'm doing this. Okay. I've got to get some nice ones. I, I, I've got to get some nice masks. Well, I know the only mask that you can get if you want to go to Florida. I'm going to send you the link. Okay. I want some floral ones. I said to my sister the other day, we're visiting my mother. She's wearing a black mask. I said, could she wear something a little more cheerful? So she pulled out of her yeah. purse a floral mask that her daughter had made for her. And I thought, that's better. The one with the daisies is what you should be doing. Okay, well, that'll be the next thing. Let's design some masks. Okay. A so question. we have time for one more question. I can't see the whole question. I could well, look. Angie, look. <laughs> we can Thank see you. that. Thank you, Angie. I appreciate that. I'm sorry, I can't see the whole question. Oh, well. And then the shears. This is, a, remember how shears to everybody, if you are thinking, it, when I say shear, if you're cringing and you're thinking your grandmother's wall shears, you know, that was those shiny shears. Think about a different way of softening your space with these linen shears, or they're really not they're linen, beautiful. they look like. They're not even shears, they're just beautiful. Look how beautiful drink. that is. And you can see through it. It doesn't block the light. It softens the space, especially in homes that have huge amount of glass, like these condos that are all glass. Do like a, a sheer fabric on them to soften it up. Let them touch the floor a little bit. Um, but yes, I love that. And, and I love that, again, with that sort of linen look sofa, it just frames the window. So think about drapery also, because look how that slip covered sofa looks so beautiful with all of that window covering. Look yeah. at that. So I'm glad I, I'm so lucky I love what I do. Yeah, you are. How do you feel about brick walls? Did it say brick walls? No, black, I love them. black walls. Oh, black. I can't answer that, Brian. I have a black wall in my foyer. I've had it forever. I can't nice. remember if it's Benjamin Moore, Night Owl or something. And it's a, it's a confined space. You know my front foyer. It's a, you know, small space. I have a white ceiling, and it, it's perfect because it provides drama. It's a great backdrop for art. It's timeless, but it's it's not taking over the you know the house. It's just a small space. That's when it works. Exactly. That's why when when I, I didn't know see whose name it was that called that asked about that. But the black wall I think can be very dramatic, especially like your foyer. You open the door and it's such a wow. And I would do that in a dining room too. I once did a dining room in black and it was so beautiful because the shit, and I used a traditional chandelier and a modern table and it just was so dramatic. And I can imagine my clients' dinner parties, how it would be. Uh, your clients' dinner parties, I love that. Do you love so, it when you finish a house for a client you really like and they have a dinner party and they invite you and you look around and you feel so happy with the space you created? True. It's such a nice feeling. I'm so proud of the work we do, and I love the work we do. It's like a you'd passion. Be, you'd be really proud. I'm showing you my black foyer, except I have to turn on lights. <laughs> Let me see. I love black. What do we have? What question about Reed? But I do. I, I mean, you can have drama. Like, we have drama in the library. Of these dark, dark walls are so dramatic. 
and especially when they're balanced with light spaces adjoining them. You know, like we have the cream walls here. You couldn't do everything dark, but you can do those moments, which is that dining room or that foyer or the powder room and then the adjoining space. Doesn't, you know, a deep, jewel tones are the big trend for fall also. We're seeing lots of rich jewel tones and that again yeah. can be deep in accessories too. So if yeah. someone wants to do black or a deep aubergine or a deep green, why not try it in a hallway or a vestibule or a powder room and bring it into the accent chair, the pillows, the throws and things like that. But we're seeing those rich jewel tones and I like to change up the pillows. I like to have at least two sets. I like to have the fall winter pillows and the spring summer pillows. So we go to pastels in the summer and soft patterns. And then in the winter time, the faux fur, the velvet, you know, the cable net, things like that. How do I feel about sectional sofas? Well, I like sectional sofas because I like to lie down. So I like to stretch, especially the L shape with the sheds. I, that is my spot. I yeah. love to stretch out. So, TV, uh, books, oh yeah, it's the best. So yes, I do like sectionals. I saw that question pop up on the screen. Painting on the risers of the staircase. The risers of your staircase, I always like to do the risers light. The treads, which is the part you stand on is stained, and then the riser and the Please? string. Always, Brian? You know, in some modern spaces, we'll do it all stained. If it's a very modern staircase, will stain the riser, that's this part, the tread, this part, and the stringer, especially if it's light floors, like these washed oak floors, then the whole staircase is that washed oak. But if your staircase is dated looking, and a lot of houses have those dated big staircases, they're all oak and not pretty. Paint the spindles, paint the riser, paint the stringer, just leave the treads the wood and do a great runner. And, and with runners, you can have fun too, because Broadlam comes in great patterns. That's have a great fun. place pattern because you can change it when you get tired of it. Absolutely. Laundry room floors. Oh, laundry room floors. Um, in the laundry room in this house, we did porcelain wood. So it looks like wood. And there's a picture in the magazine of the porcelain floor. And then we did an inset in mosaics in white in those little octagons. And it looks like a carpet in the middle of the laundry room. And we did a craft table in the middle. So you can fold things or you can uh, do crafts there. Good. I like it. Not a good idea. And think about in the laundry, yes. And notice the craft table. So think about counter stools are not just for the kitchen. They're for the laundry room. Because if you're lucky enough to have a house with a big laundry room in the lower level, do a table in the center because it's a great place to do crafts. It's a great place to paint. It's a great place to have the kids with glue guns and things like that. So get some kitchen counter stools even if they're the same counter stools that are in your kitchen, because if you have a party, you can bring them up. But I like to have that counter height table and surround maybe four counter stools in the laundry room. It's great, like I said, for folding laundry, but it's the great place. Again, since we're at home so much, do your crafts, do your art, build your scale models. I used to build car models. That was my big thing. With the really? Crew. Yes, I loved it. Loved it. So do that in the laundry room, but sit at a counter stool and do that. Alternatives to a gallery wall. Well, I would so, just say, hey, oh, let me show you. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, very good question. So up here, I just did three big, let me see if I can get back. Hold on. Three big photographs. Yes. And Jody Chapnick is the photographer. She donated those photographs. You can barely see them. But instead of a gallery wall, and they're very big, you can't see it from here, but they're huge. And just draw up your photos and make yourself like a triptych, like a big installation. Correct. So you don't have to have tons of little pictures. You can have that same expression with three big pieces. And, and you again, know, I, I still like the picture rail. I still like it. I do you too. Place for it where you can put photos and, and you can mix them and move them and put your kids' art up. And I still like that idea. Yes, it's interesting. Someone asked us about. Um, you know, a condo with concrete ceiling, exposed pipes. I don't mind the exposed pipes and ductwork. Maybe paint them black and yeah. have some fun or paint them white. You could even spray yeah. the whole spray thing. Out the whole thing. The Just give that in our office. Just spray it out. It's very cool. Exactly. Yeah, we I would never box it in and spend all that money for nothing. 
No, so spray the whole thing white. Just spray the ceiling white, the duct work, the conduits, and it's very cool. So that, that was an interesting question, and we've, we've done that before. And because quite graphic, quite interesting. But in those spaces, those are the spaces I love to do the mix of the furniture. You have the concrete ceiling, the exposed duct work, get some vintage pieces and get some modern pieces and get some luxury in there, some big expressions of art. I just love that. I love what I do. I'm so lucky I, what I yeah, do. Yeah, you are. Me too. I love what I do too. I love talking to you about it. Thank you. I love what I do. Yeah. You can see. I love reporting on what you do. I just wish more people would. That's why I'm glad we're doing this today because I wanted more people to see the house. No, but why don't we come back and do another floor in at another time? Okay. Let's We've try. We've got two more floors. Yeah, because people want to see beds and they want to see bathrooms and they want to see personal spaces. We can't do it all at once. I, for one, have to go to dinner. Okay. But, you know, I'd like okay. to come back. And I'd, <laughs> yeah. and I'd like people to check out your furniture at HBC because it's great stuff. And the price yeah. is... I, we have a lot of fun working with the team at HBC. They're the most incredible people to work with. We're, we've been partners with HBC for over 16 years. I just love the team we work with and we're able to bring all of this stuff to... Uh, Canadians from coast to coast. They have been great to us. And please buy this issue because it's almost off sale. I know. Get it while you can because this is the chance to see this house. Brian's house and all his sources and all his secrets. Exactly. All. Most. Some. <laughs> some. <laughs> I can't give them all away. I've got to save some. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's writing that they love house and home. Thank you, Colleen. Someone's going to buy your gorgeous dish, dinnerware. Oh, Emma. I think it was Emma that said that. Yeah. She's going to buy your gorgeous dinnerware. So we will, we will do, we'll have to set up another one for um, upstairs. Upstairs and downstairs, the lower levels quite oh, off yeah, the chart. Special. Okay. And I'm coming out for a tour with okay. my mask on, social distancing. With your mask. I can't wait. Thanks, dear. Ah. Thank you, Linda, so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And thank you, Hudson's Bay. You're the best. And uh, we have a great time. And thank you for all your support. Thank you.